Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels. I'm a Jewish wife and mother living in Israel. And today I want to talk to you about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Lubavitcher Rebbe was one of the most influential Jewish leaders in the 20th century. And surprisingly, his influence has only increased since his passing 28 years ago. The Rebbe was the seventh and last rabbi of the Chabad Hasidic, Hasidic group. He met with world leaders, gave them wisdom, advice, met with thousands and thousands of people that came to his house every Sunday and answered back to thousands of letters that people wrote to him asking for advice and what to do and he was an incredible leader with so much wisdom. The first lesson that I learned from the Rebbe is the Rebbe would quote the sentence, if you know Aleph, teach Aleph. This means if you know the letter Aleph in Hebrew, the first letter, then teach Aleph. And what this means is that you don't have to be um, some scholar or some rabbi. If you know something in spirituality and you could share this wisdom with a fellow person, then you should do that. For me, this means starting this YouTube channel and talking about Judaism and Jewish values, things that I love to talk about. And I could say to myself, I'm not a rabbi, I don't, I don't know enough, but that's exactly what he's saying. If you know something, you know Aleph, then teach Aleph. The second lesson is action is the most important. The first Rebbe of Chabad, the Alter Rebbe, taught that there's three clothing for the soul. There's our thoughts, our words, and our action. While they're all important, in Judaism we put a great emphasis on the deed. When we were receiving the Torah out Mount Sinai, we said, Na'aseh venishma. First we'll do, then we'll understand, then we'll comprehend. Also, another famous line in Judaism is, Achal hama'asim nimshachim alevavot. After our actions, our hearts will follow. The Rebbe repeatedly said, the actions, that's the main emphasis. We live in Olam HaAsiya, the world of doing. And that's why doing is a very important part of the world. Famous example of this is his mitzvot campaign. Chabad are known for, you know, seeking out people in the street and putting on tefillin or women to light Shabbat candles. Now you can say, what's the point? What's his, what is his intention on putting on this tefillin? Is, is he focused on the mitzvah? Is he going to go on later and eat, you know, non-kosher food and break the Shabbos later after she lights candles? Like, what's the purpose? And the purpose is he explained the mitzvot is that each mitzvah is a unique opportunity to connect between heaven and earth. And there's a great emphasis on the mitzvot, even if we don't exactly understand what the purpose of each mitzvah is. Well, you wouldn't not take some medicine, like an Advil or some other pill, before you understood exactly what the pill does to your body and to your brain. No, you take the medicine because that's what you need to. Same with the mitzvah. Even if we don't understand exactly what the purpose is of each mitzvah and why we do it, these are the rules of the world and God's intention, and it's important here and now. The third lesson from the Rebbe is to speak and to think good. Words have a tremendous impact in our world. According to Judaism, the world was created with words and neuroscientists today talk about the power that it has on our brains, that words have on our brains. The Rebbe insisted on using positive language uh, as opposed to negative. Uh, one example out of many is the word deadline. He didn't like the connotation of the word deadline and would instead use due date, which had a more positive effect. Uh, another example is the Hebrew word Beit Cholim, the house of sick, which is our he the Hebrew word for hospital. The Rebbe insisted to call it Beit Refuah, the house of making people better and, you know, focused on curing the person as opposed to their sickness. For me, the use of positive language um, helped me in the past few years, you know, in my career, I've had very nice bosses and jobs and nice people, but I've been feeling a bit lost. And instead of telling myself, you know, things that I've said to myself, like, you're a loser or you're lost. Instead of that, I tr try to reframe it in a more positive way. I'm figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out. And just that change of the words that I use has a tremendous impact on me because figuring it out means I'll try new things. I'm still learning. I'm still figuring it out. 
Uh, so to me, those use of words made a big, big difference. When it comes to positive thought, the Rebbe would quote his great-great-grandfather, the third Rebbe of Chabad, the Tzemach Tzedek, and he would say, think good and it will be good. Someone wrote to the Rebbe a letter uh, discussing some health issues in their family, and the Rebbe responded to him. I strongly discourage the behavior of those who dwell on, exaggerate, and amplify their health issues through speaking about and writing about any and every health issue they encounter, which runs contrary to the philosophy of the Rebbeim, who taught, think positive and the outcome will be positive. Our thoughts, our words have a tremendous impact. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.